As we all know by now, Age of Sorcery has added a lot of new stuff. But we're not talking about that today. We want to track back a little bit and venture into some good old alt content, for lack of a better term. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can craft in this game, but there's some cool stuff that you can get just from killing mobs and gathering some other random materials. And I'm going to talk about a few of those today and where you might get those legendary armors and weapons. We'll mostly be focusing on open world content at the moment, and I'll be making other dungeon videos for the legendary content in those. But we're going to start with with the unnamed city. It's a pretty ominous place to go visit, but it's worth your while. There are several bosses that were added and I can't remember what update it was, but they added relic fragments then so you could go to the library of esoteric knowledge or whatever it's called at the map room archivist and learn cool recipes for trading in those fragments. And you can also use those to craft a tablet of power if you learn that recipe or just eat the fragments and get extra knowledge points to spend thereabouts. There are several locations that you can gather those boxes of fragments that are just chilling around. They respawn at random times. This is not the video for that, but you can gather a lot of fragments from killing these bosses. So they're kind of an added side bonus, I guess. And it used to be the only way that we could get legendary repair kits, but now you can put a thrall of some sort into the bench, uh, named thrall, and be able to do that. Again, another video, I digress. But there are several bosses that we can come kill to get certain stuff. There are several skeletons and they tend to share the same loot pool from as far far as my experience has shown me. Correct me if I am wrong in the comments, but this is about what they drop. We'll go through this in finer detail afterwards. I'll show you where they spawn, but it's a pretty decent chunk. But because there are so many things, it is a bit of a lower spawn rate to get them from those guys. But some cool stuff to have. Then we have the albino bat, who's going to drop quivering arrows, the black feather helm, which you used to put on your tribe mate so they would wake up and be super corrupted. And you can also put on someone, kill them and send them to the desert. And then they'll also be very, very very corrupt. Though in this age of corruption, it might be actually what you want. And a quick way to get corruption other than drinking corrupting brew. There's also vermin hide pants and shoes, and they used to do one stat to every point, but since the update, they now are pretty shit. Um, the riptide is kind of cool because like the water breathing mask from Tamos in the jungle, which we will go over in a minute as well, you can also breathe longer underwater with it, and combined with the Tamos mask, you get a lot of breathing. I will go through where the location of all these dudes are as well, and then go back over through all this. The brute boss is one of my favorite to kill. He's pretty easy and possibly one of the easier like bosses to kill um, and a good source of demon blood. The predatory blade is possibly one of the best weapons in the game, but you can only use light attack with it. So useless on thralls. You also get these guys which used to be good, but now you can craft better stuff if you have a good thrall. If you don't have a good thrall, well, if it's worth coming and getting this stuff. And the shank, there's better stuff now, but like, oh, hey kitty. Got some cats as well from the update and then walking around anyone breathes on them though they're gonna die and then the red mother herself a good source of dragon horn if you hack her up with a butcher's lever but also you can get volatile glands and some dragon horn using a pick as well but you can get the horned helmet which has a bunch of armor dragon scale helm which has a lot of heat and cold resistance so you can wear that and get basically anywhere in the game with just wearing that without the need of hot and spicy foods we also have the blade of the seven winds again i'll go through these a bit but are later but the breath of the red mother is also really cool then we have some stuff not in the unnamed city let's sort these by name shall we the chef's trusted cleaver and there's also another cleaver but i can't remember its name but it drops from the same guy well a similar guy from the doom hammer but i'll go through where we can get all of these as we go as well but we're going to start with the unnamed city and we're going to start with where the armored skeleton guys are so you can come here to the white he is pretty tanky and there's a lot of other whites around. Inside this temple, I think, is also a fragment box, but it might be that one, which is usually there because people forget about its existence. I'm just going to kill him. And he didn't drop anything of funness for us today, but he did drop a repair kit and a fragment. That's 100% chance, although it could be a armor repair kit also. Just here we have this guy. He holds a two-handed hammer and he's also hits a lot. I tend to find he drops the least stuff, but I have friends who swear to always climb up here to um get the chrome sword, even though that's kind of mad now. Whatever. Yeah, see he dropped bugger all for me. A hard and still sword. But you do have to climb quite a ways to get up here, and I usually do not bother. On to the next. Around about here, you're going to find a two-handed sword guy and a lot of skeletons. It's pretty decent XP, because skeletons are good at XP, but also kind of cluster leapy. I'm trying to swear less. <laughs> But then this guy also has the same chance to drop all the stuff that the other guys do. We're having very poor luck this run. 
And then finally we have the one-handed sword guy over here. Just around the corner. There's a lot of boxes that you can find around here that either have gold and silver coins in them or sometimes they have boxes with legendary packets. Kill him. Oh, well, he dropped a other tool upgrade. That's also kind of nice. This box has a high chance of having a legendary packet. Always used to have one, but then they changed it because they hate us. Well, actually, now you can craft them. It's less important to like have to have that one there all the time. Killing any one of those dudes is going to give you a chance to get the commander's chest piece, which again is now kind of map. It gives you 60 health. Commander's helmet, which is gas protection. It's quite nice for quite a lot of gas protection that doesn't require you to craft God Breakout Helm. Corrupted Axe, as its name implies, it corrupts. The Drunkard's Blade, again, as its name implies, you can make people drunk with it. And it used to be fun to just smack around your tribe mates and get them some buffs for free, but now drinking doesn't do anything so you can just make people stamp suck there's actually kind of a better sword to have now i go about and try and get that anyway exquisite silk stuff if you're a fan of light armor i guess but it doesn't really give you any perks it's super mad the gas blade and sword they also give corruption and they look pretty cool heated argument again like its name implies it gives heat kind of like the black ice to um, weapons that give frost legacy of the nordheimer is going to give you a lot of cold resistance it's not max and it's no dragon scale helm but it's a little bit easier you to come by because there's more options to kill and you don't have to kill a red mother. Lying Bastard. This is in fact also lying and it is an axe. So the Lying Bastard is kind of fun just for the fact that you can skin any other axe with it to make it look like a sword. So obviously you want to skin the best axe possible like a Lemurian one or if you're lucky a Yogg's Touch because now my Yogg's Touch looks like a sword. It does axy things and that also does increase a lot of the reach fyi lion bastard is by far one of my favorite swords and now being able to thermagogy on onto other cool axes which i love axes if you're a fan of this channel you'll know that by now um but yeah so definitely keep an eye out for the lying bastard the maelstorm it's a pretty decent sundry weapon eh. night stalker mask again like its name implies you can stalk people in the night and gives you night vision you used to be able to put it on and then take it off and just continue having the world be lux but um yeah they changed that the quake pretty decent one-handed mace the rage hammer yeah scorpion harness and helm the harness does cleansing much like the pants from the Warmaker champion sort of crumb it's super mad now as i mentioned before they keep nerfing it and nerfing and nerfing it but also let's test out this crumb sword but unfortunately one swing is gonna use all your stamina for apparently forever same with the light attack and you can no longer do the special attack oh yeah no you can there we go i know the game was just like being a weirdo for a second i was like okay sort of crumbs so useless now but yeah so out of all the attacks you probably want to use that one as it uses my stamina out of regular longsword moves so if you're losing all your stamina anyway hey why not again best on a thrall although i don't even think you can put it on a thrall anymore i don't even think they willed it i think they changed that i don't know i don't use thralls enough and i don't use swords of chrome enough but also having certain perks if you have agility all the way to perk five and you have rolling thrusts you can in fact swing costs for no stamina so if you're really good at changing weapons rolling you can do that it's situational for sure the festering one one of my favorite axes as it has poison all of the time no need to add poison while mammoth boots increase carry capacity and also a little bit of cold or dance chest piece used to be good for the perks now you can craft way better stuff the white blade although actually it's just white blade not to be confused with the white blade which used to give you plus five or three or something like that vitality this one is a cripply sword and doesn't do a bunch else so cool you know what to look out for now out of the skeleton bosses as an added little bonus because apparently this is where i landed when i teleported in you can find a rag uh, ragment relic fragment box here as you're visiting the albino bat, you can climb up somewhere. Whee! And you will gain a lot of corruption here, so you can also kite them out of the corruption a bit further down, so you're not getting all sorts of corrupt if you don't want to be, or you don't have that cleansing helm. 
cleansing helm, cleansing chest face. He dropped nothing, but what he can drop is a bunch of this good stuff that I vaguely went over before. So the black feather helm, like I said, you put it on your tribe mates, they go to the desert, put on an enemy, and send them to the desert, anything to be cruel. It's kind of cool now. Quivering arrows, they've nerfed lots, so they kind of seem shit now. I don't know. They might still have like a lot of armor pen. I don't use bows very often. Riptide, gonna keep you breathing underwater longer, and especially in combination with that team must mask and these guys are pretty meh like i said the brute stuff he is my favorite very easy again you can craft better stuff this is one of the best in the game so let's go learn where we go find and get the predatory braid and it's pretty easy to dip in here early on in the game when you're around touching the obelisk by brimstone whoa just here and i usually run down through here maybe we'll kill the scorpion over here it's pretty easy too along my journeys and i tend to get pretty lucky and get a predatory blade a lot but this time it was some brute hell of gauntlets of the brute if i could speak and he also does give a decent chunk of demon blood the red mother with her blades of the seven winds 100 percent armor pen there's a couple other weapons in the game but you mostly get them from dungeons and stuff so i'll go into them in another video dragon scale helm like i said earlier it has all of the heat all of the cold gonna keep you everywhere final breath of the red mother if you love a torch this one has all of the hours and you don't have to repair it like ever god's eye kind of useless now it makes you have less accuracy or at least it used to apparently now it doesn't just gives you some strength but it makes you look dashing one eye and like you're some been poked by a pirate somewhere lifeblood spear used to be super op and regen your life really quickly i am assuming now it will also work well with the perk fast healer because it's a healing effect so it could be good to put back in the rotation again although it is kind of hard because we have to kill the red mother the horned helmet just a super horny helmet with a lot of armor you want to come over to the spawning pools like i said before she's a great source of horns as well and she gave us nothing like really. There's also a bunch of camps of relic hunters with relic hunter bosses that you can get hearts of the heroes off. There's lots of other videos out on the internet about them. You can also tame those relic hunters. They're probably one of the best thralls about now. So adventuring in the unnamed city, highly recommend. Good source of demon blood and some other fun potions, maybe. Used to be the best weapons in the game, so they're pretty good at least if you're starting out. <laughs> Let's go over some of the other stuff that you can get from some of the open world bosses in the game and some other activities you can do. The chef's trust cleaver there's a guy up at flotsam and he's going to be a named chef you kill him he's also got a potential of dropping a axi glass bottle thing that i'll show you in a second as well his name's razor god it's this guy here and that's the cleaver pretty sure it's him that drops it too or maybe there's like another spawn of him maybe it's a fighter dude but regardless he spawns in the same place and you get this daggery axe thing which is pretty shit because it doesn't have a lot of reach but for what you get it's not too bad the doom and the other cleaver whose name i cannot remember unfortunately to spawn in. it was the same with broken glass couldn't remember it earlier have now spawned it in the doom is given by a werewolf in the middle of the den where you learn the belly dance or right near where you learn the belly dance there's a couple of different named dudes with one skull there and then it can also be a regular guy let's head over there now just down from where you learn belly dance here at the den You'll see this guy, they have names like Wake and Whack or something, I don't remember. Kill him. Oh, and we got the cleaver, how convenient. More of the hyena, I knew something beginning with M, I just... It's another pretty decent early game cleaver, akin to like probably the best you'd get from like Black Blood maybe, I don't know, maybe the chest cleaver's better. This seems better, I don't know, I don't know man, but they're there. He may also give you the Doom Hammer, which is a really nice hammer. Another little fun place you can visit is Executioner's Entrance, it's a good source of Ica silk skeletons to fight and brimstone it's a nice little brimstone cave so you get to learn where that is if you don't already know and there's the executioner in there the cousin or brother of the brute that drops the predatory blade and we go and get the executioner's axe sword and hood these used to be some of my favorite things in the game but the hood is now again you can make better stuff with the thrall but if you don't have a thrall and you happen to get it that's cool i still quite like the executioner's axe because i like axes and it causes execution so it i think it's like the temple percent left of their health they just die so it does make fighting bosses and stuff quite easy and can 
can come off lucky sometimes in PvP. Just by a death with the ruins and what's its camp? Watch's way station and Sully's ambush. You will find one of the entrances because it's kind of a C-shaped cave. Then one other entrance is like a bit over there. Somewhere there we go. So it leads all the way around like that. Lots of spiders about. Bring your Zath knife if you want some skulls. Maybe make him face of yog or something. Come in here and you'll see brimstone. Ooh. Good source of brimstone. And continue along your way past all the nonsense. You're eventually going to get down to the middle area, depending on which way you go. This is essentially the middle. And be warned, it is kind of clustery. In here, these guys will kind of bang you against a pillar and not let you escape. And I've died here fully armored and level 60 like that. So do still take caution. Skeletons are shit. Kill this guy, and he gave us barely anything, but he can give you a lot of demon blood. So he's not bad to come and farm anyway. He is a lot easier than the guys in the unnamed city, and you get those other goodies off him, potentially. The Eye of the Watcher and the Scorpion Ward Shield are both pretty easy to get early game, and they're going to give you a boost to be able to get around in the temperatures. I left them out of my temperatures video because they were being included in this video. In hindsight, I possibly should have mentioned them in there too, but yeah, whatever. You get the Eye of the Watcher very easily by killing a one skull skeleton over on the bridge of the southern aqueduct i think he's around here there he is as you can see pretty easy to kill i'm still just gonna insta kill him and it's a hundred percent drop chance to get this guy getting the scorpion ward requires you to do the silver dungeon or the scorpion queen dungeon i'm not going to do that right now because i have another guide on that if you want to check that out please do it'll be linked somewhere around or in the about section or a comment or something it'll be somewhere but yeah you get that and that's a nice shield to have to get you around in the volcano and stuff and she also drops some other fun goodies that are worth now i honestly can't even remember what the shield of zebworth and and ruku or to do but if you do the uh dagon dungeon a bunch and kill the humanoid the actual humans not even humanoids in there the there's a couple that drop pearls like a hundred of those and then you can buy them from a merchant in booty bay so if you climb up to this balcony over here near flunt sam you can climb up generally over one of those things climb around it's not too hard shamala the pirate queen will offer the sword and stygian alchemy and the merchant over here is going to add the shield you can also buy a mercenary archer for 100 gold and an entertainer for 100 gold which is kind of fun there's a little dude down below who also sells alchemists and fighters alchemists are only 50 gold is it worth doing Dagon's dungeon to get a bunch of pearls to buy them fuck no but if you like the look of them i guess yeah maybe for thermogurging at all I don't know why they're in there. Oh, I think because that's what I was trying to. Anyway, that's actually something that you can learn from the esoteric library. I'll do another video on all the stuff you can learn from there. Goodbye. Underwater breathing mask. That's going to take us back over towards Booty Bay. There's a lot going on over there while you're there. So make a day of it, hey? Just on this little ledge, you are going to find hopefully Tamos. Sometimes he doesn't spawn, but it's really rare for him to not spawn. And he himself has a 100% chance to drop the mask. Not a 100% chance to spawn though. I've ever only ever seen him like not spawn here twice though so, and I was like oh shit, okay I just killed him and waited for him to respawn well the pirate person who was here that wasn't him he used to be one of the best thralls that you could get but now it is still probably the relic hunters which have always been a great thrall but underrated and you're gonna get that water mask and you used to be able to do some slight exploits with it but they have fixed that now in case you were wondering to get it from here or that you can no longer but it will make getting brimstone underwater a bunch easier and especially if you're riptide as well you're going to be able to do the dagon dungeon piece of piss i feel like i've probably forgotten stuff like always there's so much in this game they're always changing stuff and i'm always forgetting things so my stuff was paused um unfortunately which sucks i um came over here to show you all seeing the witch doctor was like oh my god that never happens she doesn't spawn here very often or he depending on if it's boy or girl and i killed it and i had the witch doctor mask in it and i didn't catch any of them recording so that kind of sucks but anyway like i was trying to say before i bloody didn't record myself it's um not a hundred percent chance of being here it is a purge thrall so if you knock it out and take it back to your base it will craft 
stuff really quickly compared to other stuff was still technically a purge thrall. Used to be the only way to get black and white dye unless you were even I think now no no that's just light dye colorant. I think that's a missed opportunity there but now any old thrall will do it so it's kind of yeah whatever but for the increased crafting speed it's kind of not. Um, but yeah there's not a hundred percent chance to drop the marks that was just a really fun coincidence. She's also or they are also quite rare to spawn here so I'm kind of miffed I didn't record that but anyway on to the black blood. The roundabouts here there'll be another cave don't remember its name haven't been in there yet on this playthrough apparently. There's why with the Catan caravans and you could just buy these guys for killing a couple of sorcerers but in case you happen to want to do it the old school way for some weird reason. Come up here I advise probably putting a bedroll he hits like a, a lot it's very dark in here so I'll probably bring a torch as well just down here I've gotten caught in some weird pocket of darkness in this cave before luckily I was able to get my map room out and like use it to guide myself out to here because I just couldn't see anything and having that like be able to see the path like that that's a quick little hack if you ever get stuck in a really dark place and happen to have your construction hammer on you really luckily but this fella down here he also does drop a box key for a legendary weapon as well and of course, I get the pick. I don't need it. Sure. You gotta hack him up to get the key. I didn't bother because I don't know. Oh, sure. Why not? Let's hack him up quickly and I'll show you the box. I'm just gonna fly there. Beep. Come out here. Climb up this death trap. This box here. A command blade. I uh, love to get love tap out of the boxes in these caves. I find they drop quite, it drops quite commonly from dungeon boxes in this one for some reason. You can also come up through this hole or drop down through the hole as an alternative route. People sometimes used to build there, but now you can no longer. I still can't believe I had that paused on like that complete stream of luck of getting the witch doctor there. Like <laughs> that never happens. I was expecting to go there and it to be like a yogurt priest or like just an alchemist too or something. But yeah, cool. If um, you found this information helpful, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. I'm super close to my thousand subscribers goal, which is pretty damn awesome considering I've only been at this like four and a bit months, five months now. Super thank you to all of you who watch my content and listen to my rambles. Um, hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be. And until next time, I've been Illybet and we've been playing survival games. <laughs> have a good one.